I'm, I'm waiting to see Joe run in here right now and start crying <laughs> or something like that. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys at Buckeye Country 106.5. Julia is still getting the information from our winners. But again, don't forget, this Friday, Grand Victoria Casino, Kane is coming to town. And along with the other stars from the HWA and OBW, we had Shark Boy on earlier. He's the HWA champion. He's going to take on Ray Steele. Uh, Brock Lesnar, a guy who was signed by the WWF, yeah. former NCAA wrestling champion, got a lot of press on him signing. He's going to be at the Grand Vic this Friday. big guy, too. Yeah, he's going to be at the Grand Vic uh, this Friday. Uh, Brock Guffman. Yeah. I, one of your favorites, I assume. I still haven't seen him. Anyway, he's going to be, uh, yeah, he's going to be there. You, you may see him in Dayton soon, but you're not allowed to talk about that. Yeah, we see, can't that, talk about that. See, that's either. what that's what I wasn't going to talk about. Oh, you were talking about? No, we can't. See, talk about and you that. kept trying to get it out of me, and I'm t I'm saying there's some things you can't talk about yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay, but anyway, uh, but anyway, Grand Victoria Casino. Again, it's going to be a big show, big crowd. Tickets are still available, to, but only by calling the Grand Victoria Casino. Yeah. And that phone number is one eight hundred Grand Eleven. There you go. And again, your ticket does include a boarding pass, so you do are you are allowed to go over, and you can do a little bit of gambling yeah. afterwards. You do have to be twenty one to do that, but uh, it's going to be a fun time this Friday night. So Grand Victoria, most Casino. definitely. And you know those shows, you know, from what I hear, are just absolutely, you know, electric from too. What you hear. Yeah. Anyway, so make sure you make your plans to be there this Friday. Also, don't forget the Wrestling Guys Hotline two eight five zero nine nine one. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, rain or shine. Absolutely, and you can get the latest news and information from the Wrestling Guys Hotline. And to recap, some of the things we talked about earlier, uh, May fourteenth, it looks like the World Wrestling Federation coming back to the area down at the First Star Center in Cincinnati. And if you're looking at your calendar, yes, that is a Monday night, which would mean Raw is War will be in Cincinnati. So yes. Again, that is not confirmed yet. But uh, you, you make the call. The day before, they're in Columbus. The next day, they're in Louisville. They're coming to Cincinnati in, in May. May 14th is going to be the day. And it's just because of the influence of this show. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, yeah. Anyway, tonight, 11 o'clock, HBO, Bob Costas goes one-on-one -on -one with Vince McMahon. There's you something else we haven't talked. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. There's something else happening tonight, though, too. I know. I, I was going to get to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, All right. Go ahead. Because we haven't done it yet. Yes, go ahead. We haven't talked about it. Well, yes. Stone Cold Steve Austin will be a guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno tonight. Yep. That being at 11.35 p.m. On channels 5 and 22. Yes, there you go. Uh, WWF apparently looking at bringing in Tommy Dreamer. And we've talked before, there was some uh, a lot of talk about Tommy Dreamer being a road agent for the company. That is apparently not going to be the case. At least, maybe that's not, not all he's going to do. Apparently, they want him in front of the camera as well as a wrestler. So good for Tommy. Yep, absolutely. Nova apparently was scheduled to have a tryout with the WWF yesterday, but had transportation problems. So that will hopefully be rescheduled, hopefully for him. Uh, Harley Race, and we haven't mentioned this yet, I don't think. No, we haven't. Harley Race did an online chat with mm -hmm. Slam Wrestling. Right, and Slam Wrestling, that's uh, the Canadian. And that, right. the, yeah, that's the one that Brad Hart also writes for, correct? Exactly, correct. Right. Harley Race is 57 years old. Yeah. Harley Race is a six-time NWA champion. Yep. One of the legendary competitors in this sport. Most definitely. Harley Race is considering a comeback. Now, I talked with Harley Race earlier today. Yeah. I called him up and said, hey, what's going on with this? Yeah. And he said, here's the deal. Two companies out of Japan, popping champagne or what? Two companies out of Japan have contacted me. Right. One has said, we want you to come back for a, for a, a, a I guess, coming out of a retirement match or cool. a legend match. Right. And the other company, while well, that's not what they've come directly and said, that's what, um, you know, that's what they want. Sure. So he's talking with a couple companies in Japan. And Japan has done that in the past. It was about 10 years ago, I think, maybe a little longer, that they brought Lou Thez out of retirement yeah. for a match against Sting. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, and Thez got the win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure that. So, um, so anyway, Harley Race looking, coming out of retirement. And, by the way, we did mention there's some guests next week. And maybe we'll talk more about Harley Race in retirement. So, oh, that, that just, I'm sorry. Tonight. Anyway, Thank Thunder you. tonight. You've got uh, Sean Stasiak against Reno. We never talked about Miss, uh, Miss Hancock coming back. Stacy Keebler. Because it was dumb. What well, the whole angle was done. In case you missed it this past Monday, Stacy comes out with a baby carriage, yes. and it turns out the whole thing was uh, was a joke. She takes off the uh, not all her clothes, but takes off the pregnancy outfit. It was all just yeah. a, all just a big scam. And in the baby carriage is pictures of Sean Stacy. It, it was like Bobby taking a shower and waking up <laughs> in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was just 
You know, why don't they do that? You know what? That's what they should do. WCW should go dark for a month and then come back and then, like, so, like Hulk Hogan wakes up and figures it's all a dream. <laughs> also tonight on Thunder, Diamond Dallas Page, Dustin Rhodes, take on Rick Steiner and Jeff Jarrett. Don't forget, Greed, their pay-per-view is this Sunday. And uh, it could be their final pay-per-view because yeah. March 26th is the date for WCW, their final date as of right now that is scheduled. And unless the deal with Fusant Media Ventures is complete or another deal is close to being complete, Time Warner will pull the plug on WCW at least temporarily and close the doors. And I assume they're going to close the doors finding another buyer or they may just say, okay, that's it, we're done. Not really sure. Right. But, uh, that May 26th date, a date to look at very closely as it comes up. Uh, and The Scorpion King, the movie The Rock is working on, began production today in Los Angeles. Now, apparently, The Rock is going to have to be on the set almost daily, which means that after WrestleMania, don't look for him on any WWF programs. No, not at all. And, and uh, considering, I mean, he's going to have a bunch to do because, you know, he's going to have to go out promoting, I'm, I'm pretty sure, The Mummy Returns. Yeah, the and that's returns. May the 6th, if I remember right. So Rock will be making the talk show circuit promoting that. Also, uh, that movie now, I guess, is going to be fast-tracked, and it's going to be a Christmas release yeah. for the Scorpion King. That, so, I um, mean, there's going to be a lot of work they're going to have to do on that very quickly. But I guess the way they're looking at the Scorpion King is there's, it's going to kind of be a, uh, a Darth Vader Star Wars type thing where in The Mummy Returns, the Scorpion King is, is a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be the prequel, and you kind of see how he turned, how he turned into, into the, bad guy. You know, the bad guy. So very Rushing much. it out before the next Star Wars film, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Um, so after WrestleMania, don't look for The Rock, at least for a little while. And, uh, Julia, we have winners? Yep. Who are they? They were Randy Kirby and Randy Harrison. Randy and Randy. Yep. Couple of Randys. <laughs> How Randy is that? That's very Randy. Very Randy okay, of you. Okay, stop it. That's scary. Austin Power things. You guys are scaring me. All right. All right. I'm sorry. We won't do that again. It was actually Stephen Ray. You know, they talked. Who? Jericho, Jericho and Regal. Talked Randy. By the way, i got to say, one of my favorite Randy? lines this past week. Yeah. was when uh, Coachman goes to Regal and he's asking him about the Chris Jericho match. <laughs> and Regal's just matter-of-factly sitting there working at the desk. And he says, but it's a handicap match. It's four-on-one. And Regal's line was, I think of it as just good-spirited competition. Yes. <laughs> this Great is going to be a stupid question, but where did he get his black eye? Uh, last Thursday on SmackDown with yeah. Al Snow. Um, they had the okay. match with the commissionership, and Regal won the match, but out of that match, he carries a black eye. Yeah. I couldn't remember mm -hmm. where it was or where it happened. Things happen sometimes. Yes. And sometimes yeah. you and, can't and, remember and, things. And how, and, um, I'm sorry, but you know, you, you talked about your favorite moment, my worst favorite moment on Raw this past week. Yes. Uh, do, do you have a least favorite moment? Do you want to go ahead? From and this past ahead? Monday's yes. Raw? Uh, I know what mine is. Uh, not Clearest really. day. I can't think of a moment that just really, you know. S my least favorite moment. What was that? was when Triple H attacked The Undertaker. And then the cameraman dropped his camera just for enough time that they could gingerly lower the motorcycle onto the <laughs> Undertaker's leg. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, uh, you know I, I try to think back. And is, isn't this not the Undertaker? Yes. Now, you know... Now, I've never had a motorcycle on my leg before. I was going to say. Uh... But I don't think they're all, you know, that heavy enough that you can't, like, pick them up. Right. Uh, am, I, am I pretty much correct yeah, in that? You, I would well, assume he, so, he yes. could pick them up, definitely. Well, yeah, because he's the undertaker. Over. Or, yeah, yeah, or move them. So why was that such a big deal? I, you know, not having a motorcycle on my leg. You know what? We, we could do. Right. And if you want, we could arrange like a little test in the parking lot. I'm sure we could get somebody's motorcycle. Sure we could put it on your leg. To do that. All right. I'm sure if you want to do that, maybe that. next week. I, do a little test. You want to test it? Get a. Mo I'm not. If you want to. Well, all right. We'll how, drop how the about, motorcycle on your leg? How about not a motorcycle? How about a moped? No, no it's that's too windy. You, know, you have to be. It has to be a motorcycle. For the sake of the study, for the sake of science, it would have to be an actual motorcycle. Well, all right. Well, I just want. You know, well, how much do they weigh? Uh, well, how much? Well, how much does a motorcycle weigh? I don't know. His motorcycle can't be, it, it can't weigh that much. 500, pa 500 pounds? Is that no. Oh, no, a lot less. A lot, lot less. But I, I'm actually not exactly I'm thinking sure. like 200. Yeah, 200 pounds, that's what I was thinking. Because, I mean, really, I mean, you can see through a motorcycle, except yeah. for the main, you know, you can see, like, kind of, with the gears, and well, you know what I mean. Yeah. You 
yeah, you not have a really, motorcycle, but you know okay. what I mean. Well, you can see like the you, well, you can see the tail fight. Yeah, I mean go, you. Yeah. Can. Right. But I right, yeah, if you want to do that, I'll do. It. I'm game. Well, we may do that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, don't forget next week we've got three guests lined up, very big names. <laughs> Willie doesn't want me to jinx no, anything. Don't jinx it. But next week is going to be very big, so make sure you tune in for that. Also, next week we're going to start giving away the WrestleMania books along with the DVD. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget this Friday again we'll pimp that the Grand Victoria Casino, HWA, Kane. Shark Boy, Ray Steel, the A Squad, Brock Guffman, Brock Lesnar, all the crew's going to be there. Call one eight hundred Grand Eleven because tickets are almost all gone for it, and I'm telling you, you do not want to miss the show. And we will both be there on Friday, so we look forward to seeing you there. And don't forget the Wrestling Guys Hotline at two eight five zero nine nine one. Available twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. And uh, don't forget if you want to email us to the Wrestling Guys at AOL dot com. We are done for another week. Thank you very much to Julia behind the board. And we want to thank Shark Boy for joining us a little earlier tonight. And uh, that's it for another week. So you're listening to the Tag Team Champions of Talk Radio, the wrestling guys. Um, on Buckeye, Buckeye Country, Country 106.5. 106 Champions of Talk Radio, the wrestling guys, Marty Adams and Sean Stidham on Buckeye Country 106.5. Hey, it's a musicless intro. There you go. I kind of liked it. You like the no music, just let's get right into it. Sure. And everything else, so. Sure. I mean, you know, it's it's a talk show. It's not like, you know, music show. Well, that's true. But, you know, normally you have the nice old music and everything else. Well, yeah. They were working on something. And, uh, you know what, Julia, we'll have to find out they've got it done because we may have to go back and play the intro later in the show. It may be a little backwards. Please. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the guys, Buckeye Country 106.5. Just start this. You see, without the intro, I'm totally thrown off. Take Did two. Take two. Okay. Welcome to the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. I'm Sean Stidham. Willie F. in here for another week. Julia Manning the board. 457-1065, the phone number. A lot to cover this week. Wouldn't that be womaning the board? Womaning the board? Turn it up! Oh, wait. We're talking about Julia. Hold on. Wait. Oh, wait. We're going to go back. We're going to go back now. We're going to have a, a rewind. We're going to rewind. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of times I've wished that we could do that. So, uh... Ready? Yeah. Yeah, I want to hear it. This is the... Okay, this wait, hold on. It might be nice if I hit the right button. There you go, Julie. Uh, Julie. Turn it up! All right, here. Latino heat. Turn it up! Time to play the game! I'm a bad man. That was interesting. Turn it up! No! Buckeye Country 106.5 proudly presents Sean Stidham and Willie F. The Wrestling Guys! There we go! There! Wait, that's, nice. that's that thing? Yeah, yeah. That's new intro. All right. You like that? I do like that. Do you it, pay actually. just the minimum on all your credit cards? <laughs> I like that. I like that intro, too. <laughs> all right. Can we cut through all the commercials and just play it on right You know, right during the show? That'd be great. We're going to have a uh, top eight at eight most requested song. That's the, only, that's the only song we really play. We'll go, uh, play that all night. All right. That sounds good. So how are you? I'm, I'm good. good. I, I'm real good. Um, yeah. I'm real good. I know that there's a lot of... Uh, I'm sure you're going to touch about this on the news. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on later on tonight. There's a lot of stuff going on later on tonight, and uh, one of the things we're going to do tonight is uh, give away tickets this Friday, Grand Victoria Casino. Julia, Willie's saying my mic's not on. Is, is his mic on? Oh, no. Oh. Sean, you want to start up? Okay, here we go. All right, Sean, Thank you very Sean's much. mic wasn't on. That's all right. Anyway, back to something I said at the end of last week's show. If Tim Collier from the International School of Broadcasting is listening, yes. if he could please call me, we have someone that needs to go and be instructed named Julia. It has been such a long day. We've been That's working fine, so Julia. hard. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, 457-1065, the phone number. Later on tonight, we are going to be giving away tickets to the Grand Victoria Casino this Friday. That is going to be a big show with a big person in town. Uh, most definitely. It's going to be WWF superstar Kane is going to take on Leviathan from the OVW. 
And not only that, but the HWA is going to be showcased, HWA title on the line, as the new champion, Shark Boy, right. is going to take on Ray Steele. And a little bit later on tonight, the champion, Shark Boy, is going to join us here on the wrestling, yeah. guys. And that's, right. that's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. You have your classic, uh, almost David versus Goliath kind of thing. Shark Boy, longtime cruiserweight champion, right. winning the belt in the Battle Royal. Yes. And uh, so he's now, you know, giving up the cruiserweight strap. Right. And Ray Steele, the former champion, who's what, 6'5"? I mean, how big is Ray's? I don't know. He's just big. Much bigger than Shark Boy. <laughs> I think he's much bigger than Shark yeah, Boy. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on, plus give you a chance to go to the show this Friday. And the great thing about those shows at the Grand Victoria Casino, not only do you get a great night of wrestling, mm -hmm. but your ticket also includes a boarding pass. Right. So you can go and, you know, either you know blow your life savings or win something to put into your life and, savings. And not only that, but uh, then the next day down in, in Rising Sun, which, of course, is in Grand Victoria. I understand that they're having a big Celtic festival for St. Patrick's Day. So, I mean, you, I mean, you can do that, too. I mean, actually, Rising Sun is a, pr I mean, it's a really nice little town. And then you, then you have this big casino that's just smack right, you know, on the outskirts of it. And I, I, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I believe that at Rising Sun, the Grand Vic, mm -hmm. there is sports wagering, too. There's what? I believe there's sports wagering, too. I'm is not there? positive. I think there is. And, of course, with the that. NCAA in town. I mean, let's face it. NCAA oh, yeah. sold out. Unless right. you already have your tickets. You're not going to that this week. Right. Go to the Grand Vic. They've got the nice hotel. they get the nice bars. Go have a good time. Check out some wrestling. And plus, I mean, you know, you're giving away these tickets. And not only that, but, you know, I mean, actually, you can't even get these tickets down to Heartland anymore. No, I mean, they, they're, they're sold out. They are sold out down there. Actually, the advanced sales... Uh, for this Friday's show, the fastest that they've yeah. had since they've been running the Grand Vic for that's, about six months or so. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, so Kane in town this Friday, and your chance to go see him, courtesy of us, coming up a little bit later in the show. Let's get into the news. Uh, still no word yet on exactly what's going on with the WCW deal, the Fuse at Media Ventures. Kind of give you some background on what's happened the last week or two. Uh, Brad Siegel was out last week on vacation. Right. Fuse at Media Ventures no longer taking calls about WCW. They're directing those back to Brad Siegel. Of course, Brad's on vacation, so nobody's answering anything. Yeah, didn't they ask him to come back from vacation early, too? I had heard that, but apparently he did not. Okay. So, uh, Eric Bischoff is apparently still on vacation this week <laughs> in Hawaii. Brad Siegel was back in Atlanta yesterday, was talking with Fusant Media Ventures. Right. Here is the problem right now with the deal. Fusant Media Ventures, for January, saw what WCW's actual revenue was. Right. And it was much lower, much lower than what the forecast had been that Time Warner had originally given Fusing Media Ventures. So, of course, that makes the investors nervous. Sure. One of the major investors backed out. So, wow. this is not a good business decision. I am not getting involved. So, Fusing Media Ventures, because of the January numbers, have dropped their offer by several million dollars. So, the question is does Time Warner want to go ahead and take that offer? Because, let's face it, again, WCW lost $80 million last right. year. Do you take what you can get? Or do you hold out and try and get a better offer? That's that's the question. See, maybe that's why the you know the new owners didn't show up on Nitro because nobody <laughs> even knows who they are yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what it was. You think that's what happened? I I'm, I think you've hit the proverbial nail on the I, head. I think that's what it was. Nobody so. knows who it is. Actually, I think I know who it is though. Who? And within the storyline? Yes. I think I know who. I think I I think it's going to be Hulk Hogan. Randy Savage, and Roddy Piper. Because they mentioned those names. Yes. But is Hulk Hogan going, going to come back to WCW without Eric Bischoff involved? Mm, that's the million-dollar question. That's a, big, that's a big question. Now, the other thing, too, is that apparently there is still another buyer interested in WCW outside of Fusion, Eric I've Bischoff. Yeah. We don't know who that is. Um, there's apparently some interest from a company in Japan that's yeah. uh, talked about maybe getting involved in, uh, in the purchase of WCW. Uh, here's the big kicker, though. March 26 is the last scheduled date for WCW to That's run. That's right. Nothing is on the books past that. Now, if if a deal is in place and they need another week or two to hammer out the details mm -hmm. in, the, in the contracts, Time Warner has said, That's fine. We'll run it ourselves for another week or two as long as there's a deal in place. If there's not, come March 26 or come March 27th, WCW is not in operation. Yeah. Now, whether that means they're closed for good or closed until there's a buyer, we don't know. But. Um, could be a very, very interesting And, and what day. happens to all those guys, too? I mean, if they're still under contract, but WCW just goes, hey, we're not, ru we're not running any shows right now. I yeah. mean, is it the same thing like, you know, with ECW, where the guys had to actually get a release? 
Probably, the company? I would imagine. But you, you would think that these contracts, you would hope that these contracts, for the sake of the wrestlers, have a loophole yeah. that they can, uh, you know, if WCW is not running shows, um, you know, that they that they'll let the wrestlers go. Jeff Jarrett had this problem a few months back because he was starting to take independent bookings because Jeff Jarrett works on a per-show contract. Right. He gets paid per, per show. show. And when you don't run shows, you don't get paid. And WCW forced him to stop doing that, which yeah. was a very uh, so sore spot for him. Well, the, and that's true. I mean, and plus, I mean, the guys that they do have to pay, I mean, if they're not running at the shows and they're not making any income whatsoever... I mean, well, there's there's just more to the debt. That's all. Well, that's kind of an example uh, what happened with um, uh, Joey Matthews and Christian York. Right. WCW was talking to them, and those guys wanted to come in, but they were going to be on a pay per show basis, right. developmental deal. If things didn't work out, they could let them go, and they would have to sit home for like six months. Yeah, exactly. And not in, in when you say sit home, you can't do anything in any wrestling. You can't go to any indie nope. shows. You can't do nothing. And if that's your livelihood, then. What are you going to do? Great gig. Isn't it, though? <laughs> it's rough. Great Crowbar gig. got released last week. The Harris Brothers were released today. Oh, my gosh. By WCW. That's... So more contract cutback, cutbacks there. Well, what are they going to do? I mean, can WCW survive without the Harris Brothers? You're bad. I'm just... <laughs> Thunder tonight. Not like I'm going to go out and drink with them or anything. Here's an example. Here's a little preview of what you see on Thunder tonight. Rick Steiner and Jeff Jarrett team up to take on Dustin Rhodes and Diamond Dallas Page. Shane Helms takes on Kiwi. Sean Stasiak against Reno. And also, you've got uh, Alex Wright taking on Jason Jett, formerly known as Easy Money. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ray Mysterio Jr., Billy Kidman taking on three count. Should be very interesting camera angles tonight on Thunder. From what we understand, towards the end of the program at the tapings on Monday... Most of the people were gone from the building. <laughs> That's what I heard. They were actually giving away <laughs> greed pay-per-view tickets for people that stayed. Why were they leaving? Was it just that bad? It was or that was bad. It, well, it was well. It was that bad. And plus, you have to remember. I mean, sitting through a four-hour block of wrestling. You know, I don't care how much you love wrestling. Mm -hmm. Sitting through four hours is pretty rigorous. Yeah, it is. We yeah. particularly on a you know particularly on a Monday night. I went uh, especially when it's WCW. Going back, oh, yeah. it's going back, you know, ten, eleven years. But there was a Saturday night main event taping in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and I went down to that. And not only did they tape Saturday night's main event, but they also taped uh, for like two or three weeks of syndication right. as well. So the show started right at seven o'clock. We left at twelve thirty, and there was no intermission. There was no break in the action. <sighs> it was just constant, one right after the other. I don't and, care how good it is. I'm sorry. And back then, most of the time, you had squash matches. You yeah, know, you you're had right. your uh, you know, Barry Horowitz taking on, uh, you know, Jake Roberts and things like that. So, you know, we end up seeing, like, you know, Roddy Piper three times. And, yeah. You know, and then, like, you know, halfway I th through. I think I was at one of those at one point where I saw all those guys wrestle, like, three different times. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> He's back. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good. Uh, tonight on HBO, on the record, Bob Costas, great talk show. I don't know if you've had a chance to see I it I haven't seen it, but I know I'm watching it tonight. Vince McMahon is going to be on there. That is going to be at 11 o'clock. It's a live interview with Vince McMahon. Yeah. Also on this program tonight. <laughs> I know. This is great. Bobby Knight. How's that for a tandem? I want, I want, I want you know, I mean, now, do they just do one at a time, or they will they let Vince move down on the couch? <laughs> no, I, I understand. It's just it's one at a time? So. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then who else is, uh, do you know who else is on, too? No, who else? There's another one, too. Who? Ray Romano. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. He's been doing really well. But you know what? McMahon Everybody, loves him. I, I, Everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. I went to the HBO website because I, I couldn't figure out, you know, what time it was on, you know, and we I wanted to make sure. Well, I, I understand, but I mean, it's it's not until you know it's not until eleven o'clock, right? But I wanted to make sure, you know, if I was doing the show, that I could put in a tape and tape it, right? Yeah, and then I see, yeah, Vince McMahon, you know, Bobby, Bobby Knight, Knight and Ray Ray, Ray Romano. Ray Romano. That's, that's, that's kind of funny. <laughs> that's, that's very that's good. That's very funny. That's very good. Uh, Vince McMahon, uh, you know, is going to be on tonight. Bob Costas, not a big fan of the XFL, not a huge fan of Vince McMahon, not, not no. a big fan of wrestling, not a big general, fan of wrestling, but. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Which you take is very it. hypocritical in exactly. a way. Exactly. Because 16 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, Ward brought it, no, Ward to settle the score. Yes. Hulk Hogan, Roddy Piper. Yes. MTV. Yes. Who was the guest ring announcer? Bob Costas. Thank you very much. Mm hmm. 
So he got so when much he money was moving that. up in the world, wrestling was great. Now that he's a big time talk show, and I love Bob yeah. Costas. He's one of my favorite guys to watch. You know, oh yeah, yeah most definitely. Um, yeah. It, it should be pretty interesting because actually, you know, both guys are pretty quick witted, too. Yes, they are. And I think uh, I, I really think that McMahon's going to be very standoffish because I'm sure that Costas is going to hit up on the XFL. Right, but Vince McMahon and Costas now. Now I I'm not sure I. I where is Bob Costas now? Is he even still with NBC? Oh, yeah. He is still with NBC. Absolutely, yes. All right, so actually he may be a little light. Actually, him. Bob Costas today said, no, I'm not. Really? Uh, he's not going to be light on, he's not gonna be the light on the XFL. He said though. the issues that need to be addressed are going to be addressed. Wow. And Bob Costas, there's certain guys who, despite uh, who their employer is, their employer will let them get away with anything. Well, Bob Costas, Bob Costas, is, one Costas is, is one of those guys. So he can pretty much you know, do whatever you he wants. You or I? Not one of those guys. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Hopefully that will change. But anyway, we're going to get to a break. When we come back, Jerry Lawler talking about the WWF and Paul Heyman. Also, news on The Rock. And the WWF is coming back to the area. We have all those details when we come back. You're you listening to The Wrestling Guy. On Buckeye Country, 106.5. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys, Buckeye Country 106.5. I'm Sean Stidham along with Willie F. We have all new music. It's all new music. It's all new music. And speaking of new music, coming out March 20th, ECW Anarchy Rocks. The ECW The Music Volume 2. And if you like ECW, you want this as a collector's item because... Uh, Definitely a collector's item. Yeah, ECW is uh, releasing this, uh, and you and you know what? Get it quick. Just just in case, like Francine's, I'm not making, I'm not laughing at ECW at all, but it just it kills me because they're also coming out with another DVD. Well, ECW is probably going to be pretty profitable because they're not going to be running shows. They're not going to have wrestler contracts. Apparently. Yeah, and they have a great library that people Absolutely. are very interested in, especially now. With the ability to put these things out on DVD, yeah. they're going to be putting those out. I, you're, you're probably not going to see any more ECW The Musics. Uh, e no, CDs. probably not. But as far as home videos and DVDs, they have a very extensive library. So ECW is still going to be around in that capacity. And you know what? They treat they actually treat those matches better than... Because I actually watched... Uh, I don't know if you've watched this yet. Have you watched uh, uh, WCW Classics? Uh, yeah, not yet, On no. Turner South? Not yet. Have no. you watched it yet? No, actually... It's it's cool because it it actually has, you know, matches from like 1983. I mean, it was Roddy Piper and Wahoo McDaniel teaming up against uh, uh, Kenny Kaminsky and I can't. I think it was Dirty Dick Slater or something like that. Okay. But but the problem with this. When's the last time you think Kenny Kaminsky had his name still on the radio? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the problem is is it's a half hour show, mm -hmm. and they cram like three matches in there. So they edit the hell out. They of them. edit. Yes. I mean, essentially, you see, you know, he's got him in an arm bar, and then, you know, next minute, then he's, you know, the other guy's backed up against the turnbuckle. We bought one of those uh, WCW, I can't, I, best of grudge matches or whatever video, you know, compilation right. they had. And it had the dog collar match with Roddy Piper and Greg Valentine. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the I Quit match with right. Magnum and Tully and other matches, too. But they were actually putting in sound effects. <laughs> They actually added sound effects. Why? During during the dog collar and chain match, when Piper or Valentine would hit each other, they added these sound effects. How like what? And it was stupid. cheesy as hell. Well, like boy oil oil Well, no. no like, <laughs> Those old Batman ones? Like, yeah. Uh, you know, Pow. chain or whatever, but they yeah. enhanced, they added these sound effects to enhance the match. It was really... A so real, you were too busy laughing to really pay attention to what see, was going yeah. on? And I mean, you you can't watch a match like that. I mean, no. you cannot... I, I'm sorry, no. but you... You can't watch. You cannot watch they, little and, snippets and music of a match. The entire time they kept rock music under it the entire oh, time. That it was is so really horrible. Distracted. It's retarded. Yeah. Hey, other news to get into. Jerry the King Lawler did an interview where he talked about uh, the WWF. He thought Paul Heyman did a better job the first week on Raw than he did the second week. Really? Yes. And he also thought that he knew who Vince McMahon was. Now he feels he doesn't know who Vince is. And um, he asked about his candidacy for mayor and also his son. He, when talking about uh, Brian Lawler, he said, well, Grandmaster Sexay is a much better dancer than I am. Those of you who need to know Jerry Lawler speak means that he thought that he was going to come back from the company or come back to the company. Now he feels he's not. <laughs> he also said that he, he thinks that one of the WWF superstars could have been the one that created the power play with Vince. Won't say who. Wait, what, I, I'm, wait. I'm, I'm a little confused I, about the I'm power play. I'm trying to follow. What kind of power play? Yeah. Well, uh, it was Jerry Lawler, you know, we're, okay, for those of you that don't know, Vince uh -huh. or, gives, the, gives the order for JR to fire the cat. Yes. He tells Jerry Lawler first, this is yes. what we're going to do. 
Jerry grabs the cat. They go to Vince, and he says, mm. well, if she goes, I go. And Vince says, well, thank you for your services. Bye. Right. And so now Jerry's saying, well, you know, somebody's behind a power play, and this was all an effort to get me out. But I, do, I, I, well, yeah, I do, but I don't think it was under those, you know, it's yeah. possible. But, you know, I don't think it was under the, those, you know, under those circumstances. And for those of you that don't think that Jim Ross and Paul Heyman are getting along very well, you're right. <laughs> okay, because I didn't think they were on Raw very yeah. much. Just some things that were being said. It seemed kind of like, Rear! You have yeah. that? Well, you got, they all, are, you got yeah, they, are, they are not, uh, all is not kosher there. But apparently Vince McMahon likes that. But wait a minute, I thought, I thought... JR said that he would drink his bath water or something. What did he well, say? Well, he would drink the bath water. Uh, he would drink his Kool Aid. Right. Yeah, he but would drink that his Kool Aid. Doesn't mean he wants to do play by play with it. <laughs> what? What? What kind of comment was that? He said he would drink his Kool Aid. In you other never, words, you never heard, you've never heard that expression. No. He said that. Okay. In a, history right. lesson yes. time. Uh, Thank you. Johnsburg. No, what was it? Jonestown. Yes. Jonestown. Jim yes. Jones. Who was this? Uh, kind of this David Koresh, you know, uh, Jim cult Jones. leader. Right. In Guyana. Guyana. Right. Uh, Poisoned his got... followers with Kool Aid. So yeah. They all he drank drink, his Kool Aid. He okay. would drink his poison. So, yes. In other words, does that make sense now, Julia? It still seems stupid. But okay. I, I don't get that then. You know, if you want him over on the team, but then you don't want to be part of the team that you're bringing him over to. He wants, he wants Paul Heyman in a certain role. Right. And he's and not now, there. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, well, Jim Ross. Also, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Jim Ross doesn't. You know, I don't know if Jim Ross is really in good favor with WWF right now. Uh, Jim Ross is in, probably not in the best of favor, but I don't think he's in a position. I don't think he has anything to worry about. No, I don't either. But probably the relationship's a little bit. But I mean, how right do you now. how do you think that he feels right now? I mean, here he is. You know, they they kick out his color commentary, put him with a guy that he doesn't like, reduce him to the B team in the XFL. Well, apparently... I thought he was in the A-team. No, 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 no. no. They kept Not the reason, the reason, Well, the reason Jim got demoted down to the B-team yes. was they wanted to get away from the WWF stigma the XFL Which has. Jim got demoted down to the B-team. Yes. Was they wanted to get away from the WWF stigma the XFL which has. Which is good. So then they put a skid on. Which, okay. Why did they put the skid on <laughs> at halftime, which is, uh, you know, a whole other topic. Uh, let's see what else gets you. The Hollywood Reporter is reporting that the Scorpion King, the prequel to the Mummy s m franchise that will star The Rock, yeah. is probably going to be in theaters by Christmas. I heard it actually started filming today. It did start, uh, say, the 14th, yes. It yeah, started it started today. today. Um, so after WrestleMania, you're probably not going to see The Rock in the WWF for some time. They've said he is going to be required daily on the set. So are, are you going to go ahead and make a prediction then for the... I've already said yeah. Austin's going to win WrestleMania. All right. Well, anyway, yeah. uh, Kelly, I assume it's Koo, who used to be on Martial Law. She is yeah. going to tap to play The Rock's female... Have you seen lead. a picture of her yet? I've seen her, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the air, Willie, okay? Save that no, for later on. No, 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 no. Later on. No, Kelly, is it Kelly Koo? I, I think it's Kelly Koo. Kelly Koo? Are, are you guys... She's very nice. All I know is I didn't even know she acted. That's why <laughs> I, I didn't, I had no idea. Other new uh, faces probably you're going to see in the WWF soon. Apparently Nova was going to have a tryout last night, but had some transportation problems yep. and didn't make it. Tommy Dreamer. Uh, we've talked about for some time he was going to come in as a road agent. Now apparently there's some interest in putting him in front of the camera as a wrestler. So, That's uh, but that will not happen until after WrestleMania. Right. SmackDown tomorrow night, you will see in a no disqualification match, Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho and the Dudley Boys in a handicap table match. Love, I love William Regal's booking right now. <laughs> uh, also, you're going to have uh, Tess taking on Eddie Guerrero with the European title on the line. All right. Sounds, so that sounds like a, a good. A full lineup for SmackDown. I uh, wanted to talk ne real briefly about yeah. the show next week. Uh, starting next week, we have copies, and this is a really cool book. It's kind of a coffee table style book. I'm sure you saw it on Heath this past Sunday. The Complete History of WrestleMania. Which is awesome. It is a full, you know, color uh, book by Basil DeVito, who yeah. used to be the president of the WWF. Right. He was very instrumental in developing WrestleMania and getting it started. He wrote the book, has a lot of behind-the-scenes stories, and we're going to start giving away copies of that next week. And one really, really cool feature about this, it comes with a DVD. Yeah. Which, which features is awesome. two hours of interviews, right. plus I think it's five full matches, the Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon ladder match. Which, all right, let's go over these one at a time. Because okay. you know where I'm going with I this. I know where you're going. All right. Michaels and Ramon. All right, good match. Good match. Belongs on the DVD. Hogan and Andre. One of you the mean, worst matches I've ever seen. You've got to put it on a WrestleMania's Greatest Hits. 
Why? Why? It, because you body because slammed that him? That was the main event of the show, which drew 93,000 people. Yeah, but that wasn't the best. That but wasn't that the best was, match on. That was I the worst match you. on that. That was not the best card. match. But as far as the annals of history go in wrestling, yeah, I know. Hogan and Andre was a very important match. I got blinded by all the flash bulbs when they went off. <laughs> when he picked him up too. <laughs> I hated I, I hated Hulk. You yeah. know what? I I've never liked Hulk Hogan, and I hated him way back then when I went to that show. Poor oh, Andre with his back brace on. Yeah. Uh, you have the TLC match from last year's WrestleMania. Good match. Good match. The one I can't figure out why it's on there is the WrestleMania Two Battle Royal. <laughs> I don't get that. I either. don't understand that. That way, other than the fact if they wanted a match, maybe where Andre was put over. And I that, guess. yeah. I and that was the that was uh, the one with all the football players, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. William Perry yeah. Oh, and uh, what was the guy from the Falcons? Bill. Uh, I Bill don't Brown? remember. No, I can't remember what his name was, but uh, that was horrible. And uh, the one match which is lacking, though, for apparently, is Willie. I'll let you say it's it. Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat. We, and I don't know why they did not from WrestleMania that match. three. Which, Probably one of the greatest matches of all time. You talk to anybody in the business, yeah. Any fan of, you know, that's been a fan for like the last 15, 20 years. What's your top three matches of all time? I guarantee you, Savage and Steamboat, most people will say is number one. Yep. It's at least in the top three. Absolutely. And why it's not on that DVD, I do not know. I don't now, know. Maybe I'm wrong. But I, from the preview I was given of the book, right. that match is not on there. That, I, well, I, maybe they'll show clips from but it. But then again, you got to think that at some point, they're probably going to release the entire WrestleMania library on DVD. And you know what I can't and understand? if you have that book yeah. and you have that match, why would you buy You know what I mean? Yeah. I, they wanna, that's probably one of the things they want to say yeah, when they that, bring it that out that on might DVD. Be. And I, I don't understand why the uh, King Kong Bundy versus uh, Hillbilly Jim from WrestleMania with the midgets. <laughs> I understand why that's... But you know what? What's that? I have... I have a so sneaking... George sus- Wells and Jake Roberts from WrestleMania 2. That was a classic. Oh, that was classic, also, too. Yeah. Uh, I have... Peter a, Santana and the Executioner. <laughs> we, we miss all those matches. I, I don't even remember that match. It's, Ultimate that had to be Warrior, so bad. Hercules chain match. You I know. remember that. Yeah. Now, you know what? I, I have a sneaking suspicion, though, that Al Snow and R- William Regal at WrestleMania will have midgets. Now, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really well, thinking... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. There's also talk that it's going to be William Regal and Chris Jericho. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, we for you know, you, uh, we kind of hmm. thought, I mean, I, last week, yeah. I mean, we all thought Al Snow and William Regal, that's the way it was shaping up, and yeah. then SmackDown happened, and now you have Regal going into this program with Chris Jericho. And plus, Al needs a, a, that time off to do uh, Tough Enough, because yep. they started filming that. So, yes. all right. Well, maybe when he comes back. We are going to go to a break. When we come back, we are going to talk to the HWA heavyweight champion, Shark Boy, and we'll take your phone calls at some time. I promise. I promise. I promise. On- I promise. And you're listening to The Wrestling Guys. On Buckeye Country 106.5. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Wrestling Guys. This is Willie F. And Sean is checking... Where is Sean? Sean Sean is checking news. He is always... Yes. Sean enjoys enjoys just checking news and just making sure that the show has the most up-to-date information possible. We are on top of the wrestling world. Well, I was. Something like that, yes. Anyway. I think we're, we're looking up at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this Friday, the HWA is back at the Grand Victoria Casino. One of the featured matches is for the HWA Heavyweight Championship. The former champion, Ray Steele, he will take on our current guest, and he is, of course, the current HWA champion. Welcome back to the program, Shark Boy. Sharky, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? Not a lot. So this Friday, I, I mentioned to Willie earlier, it's kind of a David versus Goliath thing. You're like what? Uh, what? 5'10", 6 foot, 190, 200 pounds? I don't think Ray Steele's going to appreciate you calling him David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't say that. Anyway. Um, I know what you're saying. Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy. He's one of the biggest guys I'll have ever faced. That's a fact. Right. So but, but at the I'm, same I'm time, you have to, you, you know, there's a, there's a camaraderie there. I mean, you know, th- he these and guys I have are been friends. A, a tag team, you know, pretty much pretty steady for the past year. Yeah, right. And we get along great backstage. Uh, we work out together a lot, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting situation. Uh, the fact is, he's the undisputed number one contender, and I, I won the battle royal, so it, you know, comes right down to it. That's the match for Friday. Yeah, there you go. And you guys have been, I mean, you've been buddies traveling on the road and everything else. So, how is it facing each other in the ring? I mean, I mean, you're kind of friends, but at the same time, you you know, you got to go out and you got to you know put the hurt in one another. Well, it's for the title, 
And, you know, that's what it's all about. Whenever you compete in a wrestling company, it's for the title. So we have to go out there and put our friendship aside and just do what we got to do. I'm expecting to have a lot of fun, though. I'm looking forward to, uh, to facing Race. He's a great wrestler, and, and I'm looking forward to testing myself that night. And you've been on a pretty good roll lately. You're picking up belts at other places, too. You won a cruiserweight belt over the weekend, right? Uh, that's correct, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, for is it New Era? That's, yeah, that's right, up near uh, Cleveland, Geneva, Ohio. Right. So and, uh, uh, going, you... back, going back there, supposedly they were going to have a show the same day as WrestleMania. <laughs> I don't know how wise of a move that's going to be, <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. If, if, in fact, the show does happen, hopefully uh, the people in Geneva will be interested in coming back out and, you know, seeing what happens. Should be a good time. We're talking with Shark Boy on the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Let's go back and talk about a little bit of how you got into wrestling because we've talked before. You're a local guy. You graduated from Lebanon, uh -huh. uh, Lebanon High School. What do some of your friends think when you go back and you see them and they think, man, you made it in wrestling? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, um, they, you know, they like to tease me about it. Like they, when I get together with my high school friends, it's like we're back in high school. Right. You know, and, you know, so they give me a hard time about it, but at the same time, they're the ones that, you know, show up a lot of times and, and cheer the loudest for me. And, you know, we just have a good time with it, you know. And, and they, they know this is something I've wanted to do since I was 12 years old. So they, they realize that I've had to really, really work hard to, to get where I've, as far as I've gotten. Now, for most people that don't know, you do wrestle under a mask. Has there ever been a time when somebody was talking about Shark Boy, and, you know, and you didn't have the mask on, and they didn't know you were actually Shark Boy? Uh, yeah, that happens quite a bit. Usually it's with kids. You know, they'll, they'll come over and, have you seen Shark Boy or, you know, something like that. <laughs> and, you know, I say, yeah, he's, he's an ugly guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that, more often than not with, with kids, sometimes with adults, that's always a trip. A lot of times the adults will recognize me without the mask because they say, oh, it's the eyes. They give you away and, you know, things like that. So, Where exactly did the Shark Boy gimmick come from, too? I mean, well, I, I mean have, have we ever talked about this on the show? I don't think so. If we did, let's do yeah, it again. Yeah, let's do it again. again. All right. Uh, it was uh, originally inspired by the song that I come out to, I Come From the Water by the Toadies. I heard the song, and it's sort of, uh, I visualized like a, a comic book character rising from the water and, you know, coming onto land to become a wrestler. I just thought it sounded like, a, you know, kind of a cool character. So... The only guys in wrestling at the time, you know, that were my size were luchadors. Right. So I decided to sort of kind of try to pass my off as an American luchador type and uh, called myself El Piranha. And um, I wasn't too, you know, I wasn't, I'm not really all that comfortable with the luchador style. I, I do some things. I can incorporate it. I feel like I'm, I'm good enough that I can adapt and work with a luchador, but I don't prefer that style to the more traditional American style. And uh, so I wasn't all that comfortable with it to begin with. And then I went to work for a promoter named Ian Rotten in Louisville, Kentucky, um, the IWA. And he had just had a, a wrestler there, Tarek the Great, yeah. who uh, he was wrestling as El Perro at the time. So he says, you know, we've just had an El Perro. You know, why don't we, uh, and this thing on your mask kind of looks like a shark, you know. And so uh, thus Shark Boy was born. And, you know, there was no turning back at that point because it just, it just caught on fire. And you, oh, go ahead, William. Did, did you ever think that it was going to catch on, though, as much as as it did? I, you know, and much as it has too. I mean, did you ever think that you would be at the point where you'd be watching? You know, that you could go to the movie theater and sh see a Shark Boy T-shirt up on the big screen. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, I mean, if you know, if you if you see Beyond the Mat, mm -hmm. I mean, Mick Foley is is proudly displaying a Shark Boy T-shirt. Right. Um, well, I've always been a you know kind of a big dreamer anyway, um, and so I, I guess. I guess I've always kind of had that, that positive vision in my mind that it, this sort of thing could happen. But uh, to be honest with you, man, who, who really expects yeah, going into this business to, to make it, you know, to any degree to where, you, my God, your shirt's going to be up on the big screen, like you said. P uh, kids are going to want your autograph and things like that. It's, it's tremendous. It's a tremendous feeling. I think I've told the story before because uh, I guess it's been about a year or two ago when we had an autograph signing up in Piqua with Mick Foley and Al Snow. And Les showed up because he was going to take Mick down for an appearance in Cincinnati. And that was when uh, Les brought Mick the Shark Boy shirt. Yeah. And if you, wanted, if you ever wanted to see Mick Foley and Al Snow mark out, they <laughs> did so at that yeah. point. I, yeah, I and for most that. people, I mean, no offense, but they said, you know, who's Shark Boy? Because, I mean, you're not on a national stage like a lot of these guys. Right. And yet the guys in the industry have really taken a liking to you. I remember when we were driving 
uh, last year at Pillman, who uh, we had um, Disco Inferno and, yeah. and Hugh Morris with right. us. We were driving them up, and w they started talk looking through the roster, and they said, oh, Shark Boy's going to be on. That's cool. Yeah, Shark Boy's here. <laughs> so you've developed really a cult following within the locker rooms around the country. It's Yeah, it's pretty nice. I, you know, I just... Uh, there's a lot of great guys in this business, and, and that's one of the most fortunate things. Um, the One of the things I'm most thankful for is that I've been able to meet so many great people, and uh, all those individuals that you named have been nothing but uh, friendly to me, and, and you know, it's, it's been great. Now, you've also had the chance to, uh, you know, get a drink of the big show, so to speak. I'm not talking about Paul White. We're not, we don't go anything <laughs> like that. But you did go in the WCW for don't a start while. Ru don't start rumors on this show, Sean. <laughs> yeah, that's how rumors get started right now. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway. Nick. I can see B.J. Bethel, you know, not transcribing that the right way, and <laughs> then like it's all downhill. Brock Guffman would say. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to appear on Ring Rats, and the whole, everything's going to go downhill from there. But anyway, what I was, what I was going to get at before I was so rudely interrupted, Sorry. That's okay, you know. But you got to get a chance to go to WCW. How many times when you are now wrestling back in the HWA or when you're at some of the other places around the country that people come up to you and say, hey, what was that like to be in WCW? I, I get asked that question a lot by fans, but mostly by the guys in the back. They want to know, you know, what's it like in the locker room and what's this guy like, what's that guy like, uh, you know, tell me a story about these guys. You know, I, I get it more in the locker room. Than, than with the fans, to be honest. So the fans just want to know about, you know, the mask and, you know, how, how you know, questions like that. I mean, uh, uh, I t to be honest with you, I've, I got more recognition from the MTV special than I did from being on WCW as far as the fans go. A lot of times I'll hear that from, from people before I'll hear about WCW. They'll say, hey, I saw you on MTV, you know. And not only the MTV special, but let's not forget, you were also featured on the Discovery Network for a while. Right. Yeah, yeah, during, Shark yeah during Shark Week. During Shark Week. They came to the Pillman show last year and filmed my match, and they cut about three or four hours worth of footage of me and then used it for like a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. So, you know, that, that was actually a lot of work, though, you know. But uh, it, was, it was great. It was fun. Now, going back to when you were in WCW, you kind of got caught in the entire mess between Eric Bischoff and Bill Bush, and you were really more of a victim of bad timing than anything else. Has there been any talk with, you know, everything? Is Bischoff coming back? Is he not? Maybe you getting another chance to go back to WCW or maybe even WWF? Um, i got to be honest, man. I, I mean, uh, I, I've, I'm trying to stay within... I'm trying to keep up on the information as best I can, but it just seems like nobody knows for sure what's up with that sale, you know? And, I mean, we hear one thing one week and something else the next, and um, it just, uh, I don't know. It's, you know, time's going to tell, I guess, you know. I mean, I don't know what else you can say about it. I'm, I'm doing what I feel like I need to be doing, and that's getting in the ring and, and giving the best matches that I possibly can. I'm working wherever I can. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm pursuing every avenue that I know to pursue, and the rest has got to work itself out. We're talking with Shark Boy, and you can uh, get up to date on what's going on with him by visiting his website, sharkboy.net. And through there, you can order your Shark Boy t-shirt, your Shark Boy mask. One of the really cool features about the website, and uh, I know Chris Jericho does this as well, is he has a timeline with all of the matches you've ever been in, which is really cool. Thank you. That's, uh, I, I can't take any of the credit for that. That's my, uh, <laughs> that's my webmasters, Eric Bannister and Kirk Shepard. Hello, guys. <laughs> And, and I know also that um, you can go, I believe, still to wrestling.com and you can vote for Shark Boy. I haven't been able to get on that site lately. I don't really? Know what, yeah, I don't know what Because I know for a while you could go there and you could vote for Shark Boy. And it, there was only like, what, maybe seven guys? Seven, eight guys, I think, on that list? Um, yeah, there was uh, probably eight. Yeah, I mean, to uh, vote for him for Best Independent Wrestler of the Year. So, uh, I mean, you, and you were in really good company there, too. Right. You know, was, Chris Daniels. I was, and, I was actually sitting second. I was neck, yeah. ne neck and neck with Reckless Youth. And right. I was, I was just inching ahead of him, and Christopher Daniels is just way out in front of the pack. He's, he's obviously going to win. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's really great to even to be considered or mentioned in that list of names, you know. You sound like you're, like, going up for the Oscars. It's just great to be nominated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to be uh, political, political about this, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the things, and I love this story, is when you were talking with WCW and Eric Bischoff wanted to bring you back in, there was actually an idea to build a Power Rangers-type show around you and some other guys, right? That's, yeah, that's correct. That's what we were brought down there for initially. And um, that's why they sent us to the power plant. They wanted to sort of hone our skills for that, for this project. And then, you know, it didn't take too long. It was only a couple of months after I'd been down there, and, and um, Bischoff uh, was reassigned, as they called it. <laughs> and uh, 
a few weeks later, so was I. You know? <laughs> so, well. So that's one thing I want to, you know, talk about the power plant a little bit, because a lot of, you know, and, and particularly, you know, a lot of people who want to get into the wrestling business, and if they think, the, you know, they have what it takes. Now, you know, I know you and I have talked about the power plant a little bit, and you said that's, that's like the most grueling boot camp you've ever been to. That, well, me personally, definitely. I don't, you know, I've never been, I was never in the Army or the Marines or anything like that, so I can't compare it to anything like that. But as far as anything I've ever done in my life physically, if, you know, far and away, it was the toughest thing in the world. It was like every day of your life was, was you know, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. You were, you were there. You were running. You were doing push-ups. You were in the ring taking bumps. Um, you know, just, it, oh, man. It was, and then you had to clean up afterwards, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You didn't have to, like, mow Paul Orndorff's grass or anything like that, did you? Have to what? You didn't have to, like, mow Paul Orndorff's grass or anything like that, I, did you? Not, not me personally, no. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> the road. I just want to keep doing this as long as I can. I mean, things in, things in my life have changed a lot lately. I, I have a family now. Um, you know, I'm married. I, I just I have an eight-month-old son and a six-year-old stepson. And, um, you know, I just want to, I need to still provide for them as best I can and also pursue my dream all at the same time. It's, it, you know, it's kind of a juggling act right now. In between changing diapers. In between change. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't know the half of it. Oh, no, I, I have an 18-month-old, so oh, yes, okay, I do. Okay, you do know the half of it. I do know the half of yes, it. Yes, so. okay. Uh, but anyway, this Friday night, Shark Boy taking on Ray Steele. And also, don't forget, Tuesday nights, the HWA features live showcases down at the Les Thatcher Main Event Pro Wrestling Camp. And Shark Boy, from time to time, does appear on those. That's where you won the title, right? That's right. Big and, Battle Royal. And those are free. And don't forget his website, sharkboy.net. And what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the first caller. Or actually, we'll take uh, the first Three callers? Yeah, I, you know, but, but but make it a little hard. Can, can we make it a little hard? What do you want to do? Well, I want to see if people are were paying attention. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 see. Let's well, Shark Boy trivia. Okay. Okay. Who gave the name Shark Boy to Shark Boy? I think that's good. All right. There you go. Is that okay with you? Shark? Okay, we've oh, lost Shark. Shark. Okay, Shark's so we've gone. lost Shark Boy. Shark Boy had to go change a diaper. <laughs> but anyway, so was. we appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time with Shark Boy. And don't forget. No, he's back. Oh, on. you got Shark Boy back. Shark, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What did, happened? Did, did you have to change a diaper? Or? I didn't do anything. That's the quickest diaper change I've ever heard, I think. Was that amazing? That was that was <laughs> tremendous. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to give away some tickets, and but we're going to do Shark Boy trivia. Okay. Okay, and we're going to see if people are paying attention during the interview. Okay. And and who gave you the name of Shark Boy? So the first person that gets that correct gets a pair of tickets to go see Shark Boy along with other stars from the HWA and OVW. And don't forget Kane uh, this Friday night at the Grand Victoria Casino in Rising Sun, Indiana. Tickets are still available. And for details, you can go online to hwaonline.com. Sharky, I want to thank you very much for your time. And again, don't forget, you want to find out about the latest on Shark Boy, go to the website sharkboy.net. Get your Shark Boy merchandise and so much more. And uh, we'll see you Friday night. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Thank right, you take very care. much. Heartland Wrestling Association heavyweight champion Shark Boy defending his title against Ray Steele this Friday night. We're going to go to a break. Your answers when we come back. Who gave Shark Boy his nickname? 457-1065. And you're listening to The Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Welcome back to The Wrestling Guys at Buckeye Country 106.5. Wait a minute, what is that? That's music. That's our new music. That's from WWF The Music Volume but who 5. Is, but who is that? Is that... It's Billy Gunn. Oh, God. come on. Can we... Can hey, we was that or Kay Quick? Now you get over it. All right, Billy Gunn. Next but time we got K other Quick. music we could select from. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, we got I'm more of a library than Volume 5. We got the ECW stuff. We got the other <laughs> WWF stuff. This is the if it's a thing. decision between Billy Gunn and Dead Air, I think we go to Dead Air. <laughs> Is that okay? Anyway. No, I like his music. You don't have to like it. Are you it. saying we're not going to... It's gonna... not Billy Gunn's music. It's uh, James Johnson. That's the well, guy yeah, who does like all this stuff. I like that guy. Are I you don't... saying we're not going to have him on as a guest anytime Billy soon? Gunn? Probably not. Okay. Anyway. 457-1065. Uh, so if you just joined us, we just had on the HWA Heavyweight Champion, Shark Boy. Yes. Who is going to be at the Grand Victoria Casino Friday. And we're going to give away a pair of tickets because... We just those kind of people, and right. not only do you see Shark Boy, but you get the other guys from HWA, OVW. Brock Guffman's going to be there. That's, that's going to be worth the price of admission. All those. That's what you heard. Yeah. Okay. And Kane as well, of course, is going to be there. We've talked. We've mentioned that. And w during the course of the interview, we talked about how Shark Boy got his name. Yes. And somebody gave him that name. Right. And to make sure you're paying attention, 
We didn't tell them there was going to be a quiz after the interview, but there is. It's well, a pop quiz. These are very, you know, these are very valuable tickets. Yes, they are. Okay. These are, you now, these are, wow. Yeah, those have are you, good have, seats. You, have you seen how much? Yes. No, anyway. These are really good seats. So, Ooh. let's go to the phone lines and let's see if you are paying attention. Julia, who do we have up first? We have Rob. Rob. Rob, welcome to the Wrestling Guys. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine. How are you guys? Doing Good. well. Who gave Shark Boy his nickname? Uh, it was the guy that uh, <laughs> it was the guy that saw his mask and thought it looked like a shark. Nah, shark we need boy. a name. We need a name. Need a name. Uh, Famous name on. too. Five seconds. Famous Five name. Seconds. Dun, 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 dun. Nope. I don't know. No, not Les nope, Thatcher. Not Les Thatcher. Sorry. Ooh. Thanks for playing. Let's go uh, to the next line. Who's it's this? Tina. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hi, doing good. 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 Who gave Shark Boy his name? Okay, well, here it is that y'all want an actual name. All I actual remember name. Was, it was because, it was from when he went from uh, see the HWA from being El Piranha. I remember that. It was oh, the guy. Oh, that's who good. Was the guy who gave yeah. Shark Boy his name. <laughs> it was the prom can, it was the promoter, the promoter of the of HWA. HWA. Yeah, that's right. And his oh. name is. And for life of me, I cannot remember what his name. Was. I'll give you. I'll give you one more hint. Listen, I'm going to give you one more hint. I'm going to throw this out. Also, okay. him and his brother were both in ECW together. Oh jeez. Now, all and, right. And they, and they actually, oh no, I can't get it. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Four five seven one zero oh, six five. Grand Victoria tickets on the line. What promoter gave Shark Boy his name? In fact, if you're near like any place that sells DVDs right now, look on the back. <laughs> of the of the extreme, uh, no, it's not that. Um, no the, 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 more newest, no the newest, the newest ECW DVD, mm -hmm. and it, there actually has a match between this guy and his brother. It's a Taipei death match, and that is the guy. So if you happen to be in Electronics Boutique or Best Buy right now, and happen to be listening to the show at the same time, on, you know, <laughs> pick up a DVD, and it's right there. So anyway, and do again, we got somebody? And again, this Friday, okay. HWA OVW at the Grand Victoria Casino. Uh, let's go over some of the other matches. Yeah. We, we, we've talked about the HWA title match. We yep. talked about Kane. Um, who else do we have on the show? Because you got the list. Um, you have you have uh, the Jablonskis taking on uh, Cody and Taxi. And this is interesting, too. Now, I just I just heard about this. Okay. Now, Cody and Taxi are the tag team champions. Right. The Jablonskis, so, well, they've never really been. I mean, one of the Jablonskis was a tag team champion. Now, I guess an extra stipulation was added last night. And the stipulation is, if, if the Jablonskis pin Cody or Taxi, yes. whoever they pin is out of really? the HWA. So this is like now, loser leave town, in a way. Yeah, no, they're, they're out of the... I don't know if they have to leave town. They might have to, like, you know, sell <laughs> pencils or something. <laughs> now, if Cody or Taxi pin each of the, each, either one of the either Jablonskis, one. Brock Guffman is out. Really? Yeah. Now, how do you feel about that? What do you mean how I feel? Well, I thought maybe I think it'll be a really good match. But I mean, if Brock Guffman was to have to leave the HWA, I mean, how, what would you do? I, I don't know. I mean, I'll come do the show. Okay. Anyway, uh, Julia, do we have somebody else ready now? Yes. Yeah, we have James who is. Uh, all right, James. Kay. How you doing? James is there. He's gonna try to take a guess. James, are you there? Paul Heyman. No. Not Paul Heyman. Damn. Nice try. Oh. Thank you very much. You got to oh. pay attention. See, I told you. Didn't I tell you? I told you, you during the break. This is the way that we start giving away prizes on the show. These are very valuable prizes, and we want people to pay attention. So, again, here is the question. Shark Boy used to be known as El Piranha. Yes. Then he went to the IWA. Yeah. And he said, you can't have that name. We're giving you a new name. Here it is. Who was the person that gave him the name? Yeah, exactly. Four five seven one zero six five. We can talk it about some of the other. It matches. was not Les Thatcher. No. It was not Paul Heyman. No. So you know, we'll try again. So anyway, okay. Other some matches. of the other matches on the show, you also have Pepper Parks, the other member of the A Squad. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be taking on Matt Stryker. That is for the cruiserweight. Uh, you have um, an OVW match, which is going to be a uh, Brock Lesnar, and I can't remember. And I can't remember who his partner is. Uh, it's a tag team match. I know what you're talking but it's, about. Yeah. It, but the, versus the Disciples of Sin. And then you also have uh, Chip Fairway and Nigel McGinnis. And they're taking on J.R. Ryder, who is... Uh, if, if, you know, I mean, the bad thing about J.R. Ryder and I, you know, I, is that you know, if anyone watched Jacked, they saw J.R. Ryder on it. Yeah. He lost to Billy Gunn. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got to pay your dues, though. No, that's true. You All have right. to pay your dues. I mean, for example, and his tag team. Rhino, of course. And B.J. Whitmer is his tag team partner. That's um, who it is. And I've said this before. B.J. Whitmer right now has the best frog splash Absolutely. in wrestling. And yep. hopefully you'll get a chance to see that Friday night. 457-1065. We still want to know who gave Shark Boy his nickname. He was in the IWA when he got the name. Yes. That's all we're going to tell you. you and and I said, and I thought this was a big hint, because I don't think there's a lot of other brothers in ECW anyway. Uh, the Dubs. The, yeah. Well, yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. But uh, the one of the guys had a very, you know, both of them were very famous in ECW. Yep. Both have the exact same last name. Yes. And both of them fought each other in a Taipei death match. There you go. 457-1065, the phone number. And don't forget, if you don't win tickets from us tonight, then you can still get them. Uh, go to the you have to go to the website Grand yeah. and they'll get the information through hwaonline.com. But you're going to have to pick them up at the Grand Victoria Casino. Yes, there is no other tickets available. I believe it's uh, 1-800-GRAND-11, I think is the number that you d Is that on there? Uh, well, um, I think it's 1-800-GRAND-11. Yes, 1-800-GRAND-11. And you can call them for information, yes, too. Yes, and they do have a hotel there as well. So if you decide to do a little bit of gambling afterwards... And, you know, other partying, you can go sure. ahead and spend the night. It's a great place to go. Uh, four, five, seven, one, oh, six, five. Julia, who do we have okay. next? Sean is going to take a guess. <laughs> was that funny? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab at it, man. Okay. okay. This, this guy was, okay, uh, da, 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 da. winners. Who? Winners. No. No, nice try. Thanks very much. Do we have somebody else ready to go? Yeah, Eric is a uh, Eric. On the phone. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. How about Ian Axelrod? Ian Rotten. Ian Rotten is correct. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations, Eric. Thank you for paying attention. All right. So you're going to go to the Grand Victoria Casino on Friday. How's that sound? Oh, okay. All Sounds right. Great. Good. Hang on the line. Julia's going to get some information from you, okay? Yeah. All right. Hang on the line. Congratulations okay, there you to go. Eric, who was paying attention. That's right. And he gets to go to the Grand Victoria Casino. So congratulations to him. Tell you what, we are going to go ahead and get to a break. We come back. We're going to open up the phone lines. 457-1065. Right. Your thoughts of Shane McMahon back in the WWF. <laughs> Julia likes that. <laughs> He's not a hardy. He's a McMahon. I guess he has money, so Julia yeah. likes that. Anyway, well, you're listening to the Wrestling Guys. On Buckeye Country 106.5. Whether you're aware of it or not. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys. Buckeye Country 106.5. Sean Stidham along with Willie F. And, of course, Julia behind the board. And don't forget the Wrestling Guys hotline, 285-0991. 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. New Rain week. or shine. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you can call in and get the latest wrestling information brought to you, of course, by... Grips and Tips in West Carrollton. Yes. And uh, if you want to, get to see what they have to offer, go to their website, gripsandtips.com. Billiard equipment. They customize golf gear. And, of course, the weather is getting much nicer. So you want to make sure you get your stuff in shape. A lot of my friends play golf. You don't and, play golf? Oh, no. I, no. You know, I don't, that's I never stand, a game I got into. I can't I like golf. to drive the cart. <laughs> that I can do. Driving the cart, I like, I'm yeah, fine. That's right. I I'll like, be the chauffeur. I like drinking the beer that the other guys, you know, <laughs> when the other guys go off and, and to putt. <laughs> I like drinking the...